there was 999 colliery hoses, but there was more than 999 people walking at the pit. And in its heyday, Chapel was estimated as having about 5,000 men working for it. But Chapel was a big colliery in its time. I mean, my grandmother come from Ashwinnan, but it was the pit that brought her here. They, they came for the work, and there was plenty came. It was my grandparents that come from Crook, so my dad must have been... He was born in 1901. He worked in the pit all his... Well, since I was born, because I remember him coming in when I was at school coming in from pitting and getting into the tin bath, you know, because he used to get the old tin bath out from the yard. And uh, they, used to, they used to get the, the laden tin, what we call the laden tin, because the water was being boiled next to the big black range fire. It used to be tipped into the, into the tin bath. If it sprung a leak or anything, I think my dad used to get, like, the soldering iron out and just, like solder it back up again because I couldn't afford a new one. <laughs> I used to come home from the pit absolutely black, black. And you used to have these like, I think they called them pulleys in their eyes. You know, like the membrane in their eye was full of dust, covered in scars that were black because of the dust getting in well it, when they'd first done it. I was being one of his mates that lived in Court Street. I just said to him, what? I seen a colour, he says he not washed his back. Never washed his back. You could see the line when he had a white shirt and you could see the black. He says, oh, he thinks it weakens the back. <laughs> it's all wife's tell, but he wouldn't wash his back. Grandad. My granddad used to come in from, from the pit and he had the, those oily black clothes on and when it's as though you like stepped out the trousers and they would just stand there on their own they were like hard and and stuff and, and the big and horrible thick belt uh -huh. and me, i could see my mother now we used to bash them off the side of the wall to get the coal muck out there used to be these big clouds of coal Black dust me, yeah. behind every son in eaton trent street all the kids bob met us they used to go over on the sunday night to check all the things we read for the, for the Nietzsche have gone in and you said, we're well, doing number three where the pit baths were and all the kids in the trenches, there'll be a stack of a gun along with Bob and you said, right, I've got 20 minutes walk today up in the bus, we'll get yourselves in and we're all in the showers on the Sunday night then used to walk, we're all back up every Sunday night because <laughs> obviously at home we just had the ten bus where we thought it was great going in the showers <laughs> You'd come home, he'd get in the tin bath in front of the fire with his trunks on, get dried, have his tea, go to the pub. But he always went out dressed. He never, there was no casual way like there is now. He always had a suit on and shirt, tie, very, very smart. And you'd go to the pub, have a few pints and come back. You could set your clock by him. He went out the same time every night to the pub and he came home the same time every night. Um, you know, he went out on a Sunday morning, his dinner was put on the table for him, and he would come in at that time, you know. I followed in my dad's footsteps and he didn't want us to. My uncle, my dad's brother, wasn't official, he was a safety officer. His brother was a safety officer at Crossing Clare of Yale County, and they both wanted me to get onto the management side. You know, but I had to serve so same, same many years in, in the quarry. I mean, I'd been for one or two interviews around the boot, but I was 15 when I, and just 15 when I left. I went and signed on to the can down the pit, where well, you couldn't, but to go into the, the first job I had was in the timber yards at Chuckle. When I was 
when I was allowed to go down the main, and it'd be nine o'clock in the morning shift, there was a few over, about five or six little lads. And uh, when I first went down the main, and all the blokes were saying, oh, you're worse than my tell you. Oh, I said, no, I said, I'll manage it. These were fellas who were finishing the, finishing the years, you know. Supposed to be light work, but you believe me, it was not light work. It was night work. But the little fella, he says, well, what are they called here then? I says, Terry Meadows. Oh, he says, that'll be your father, Bob. That, that was my father who done, who looked after the wagon wheel. And uh, he says, me, that'll be your auntie, Winnie. My auntie Winnie, she was a character. She always wore, she always wore suits. Never wore skirt. Always wore skirt. And, uh, he says, well, that'll be Auntie Winnie, I says, I. He says, has she got balls under the pants? <laughs> I'll never hold that before, you know. And just, I says, what? He says, wait, everybody knows, everybody's saying, has she got balls under the pants? Because I've never seen her with a skirt on, you know. The thing was, he didn't want me to go down the pit. You know, he said, all, my, all the family did work down the pit, what I had, but he said, Terry, you're not going down the pit, like, no, you're not working down there. You know, so, and I know the reason why, I, I, I can tell you the reason why he, he frightened us of going down the pit. I was, I was about 13, and uh, he, uh, he, took us, he, he took us into Silver Slipper Drift, and as we walked down the Silver Slipper Drift, it was a great big dark hole, semi-circled hole. And he got us, I walked down, he, you know, I was already gone in, but once I got down to about a half a mile, I think he'd done his job, like, I think he frightened us. I think that's what they just said, Terry, there's no way you're going down the pit, like. He was a spe what they call a special man, which he wasn't really special, he was just first aid trained, I think, that's what he would be. And if there was any accidents, my dad had to go down the pit and bring the casualty out, treat the casualty as best he could, and then bring him out. I remember once he had to bring one of his friends out, and he'd actually died, he'd been killed. Another man had brought his back, um, but he did it, him and his friend did it, and probably a few more, but you know. When the hooter went, you waited, you had to then wait the, however long it was for your husband, hopefully, to come home. So you were waiting for the door to open and hoping he hadn't been hurt in any accident or anything. So it was quite a stressful time for, for the older people. It was a tough time, very tough. If you had none, if you had none, the, what the miners had to do, underground, 18 inch seams lying on your sides and this is what the tails come out of the pit lying on the sides and hewing a, and, and hewing, a, uh, hewing the coal face when a, when a pick you know just getting right down hewing it so and I, I got down I went no I don't want to go any farther I just I think that's why he done his job like he done his job for us which was which was good of him I suppose <laughs> There was a bench side uh, what the pizza shop is now. There was a, a wooden bench there. And it didn't matter when you passed or what time you passed, there was always old men sitting on it, like, trying to get their breath. And then I think they were resting there to make the final leg up the bank to the pub for the paint, yeah. When he was finished from the pits, he was basically finished. He, he did have quite a... Um, high level of pneumocoliosis which it did eventually kill him you know um, but he, he, he worked hard he, he was a young man with a big family so you know he, he had to work hard I suppose so but he was a typical chuckle bloke I would say um, he worked hard um, he got dust on the lungs, he had to go to Connor's head for a while to uh, try and get some fresh air in his lungs and that. And he went with Dr Dr Potter, I remember you called him Dr Potter from Gosforth. And he said to me, Dad, you, we're gonna, you're going to have to leave the pit 
because if you don't, you're going to be dead by the time you're 65. So he got out of the pit that way. I think he got some compensation in that. And he actually died when he was 65. So related to the dust on his lungs. Hey, everybody moved away, didn't they? A lot did. Still some. But it was a big hit. They weren't prepared. Chocolate, chocolate weren't prepared. And uh, I never thought the day it would shut down. It's there as a symbol to tell people that there was a colliery here in Chowell. And you, we're now, with all the private landlords and people shifting into the village, they didn't have those of mine here.